Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we'll be looking at the top 10 best beat-em-ups currently available on the Nintendo Switch. Now this idea came to me when I was streaming River City Girls last week and one of the viewers asked me what would be my top 5 beat-em-ups. And although I tried to answer them on stream, I really wasn't satisfied with my overall answer. So I decided to do a specific video and rather than just doing a top 5, I will extend it to a top 10 beat-em-ups. Also, before we get started, I do want to say that I will be ordering this list from 10 to 1. However, I do think that this category is very, very subjective, and which games you would place at the top might be different than the ones that I have placed. So rather than looking at this as an ordered list, you might want to look at this as a just top 10 overall best beat-em-ups, and pretty much the automatic games that if you pick up, you most likely will have a great experience. And as we get started, don't forget that if you like the content, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. So to start off our list at number 10, we have the Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle. Now, if you've never heard of this bundle before, it groups together 18 awesome titles from the 8-bit NES era. And in those 18 titles, you have some of the biggest examples of games that have set the standard for beat-em-ups as we know them. For example, my top picks out of this bundle would be the original Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2, River City Ransom, and even Renegade. Now this bundle does extend itself into some sports related titles that use the Kunio Kun as a framework. However, if you're a fan of retro gaming and you want to pick up some of the beat em up titles that actually set the standard for the genre, you cannot go wrong with this bundle. And although $40 can seem quite expensive for a bundle of retro classics, you can regularly see it on sale for between $10 to $20. Now at number 9, we have another retro collection that features some great beat-em-ups, the Sega Classics Collection. Now this collection groups together over 50 games from the Sega Genesis era. However, among those 50 games are some of the best brawlers from the 16-bit era. And once again, just to name a couple of great beat-em-ups included in this collection, you have Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3, Golden Axe 1 and 2, and you even have Comic Zone that could be considered a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Now what's great in this collection is you see the next step of the evolution of the genre. Once again, they took everything that was set in that 8-bit titles and they pushed it further in these new games. However, just again as a quick warning, don't forget that these are true retro games. Meaning you will have to occasionally deal with some muddy graphics and slightly sluggish controls. But these are, nonetheless, true beat-em-up classics. Now to round off our retro bundles, at number 8, we have the Capcom Beat-em-up Bundle. Now as the title suggests, this collection is all about the beat-em-ups. And you get 7 great titles from Capcom. Among my favorite are Final Fight and Knights of the Round. But to be quite honest, in this pack, all seven titles are quite great beat-em-up fun. Also, a lot of these games are from the later life cycle of the 16-bit era, meaning that some of them are starting to get quite refined, although they are still retro games. And more on a personal note, in this bundle, Knights of the Round on its own would have been easily worth the full price of admission for this game. I even splurged and picked up a physical copy from Japan. So now at number 7, we get to the first of our more modern entries with The Takeover. Now although The Takeover is a more modern entry, it is a true revival of the retro beat-em-up genre. However, it does insert a lot of modern mechanics into its gameplay, focusing more on combos than just button mashing. You also have to juggle between two separate super meters, one making you invincible increasing your damage and the other one a screen clearing move. The game even throws in a couple of really crazy alternate stages, one having you driving and shooting in a car and the second one flying a jet. In reality, the only reason this game isn't in making it any higher on my list is simply because its art style is hit or miss depending on the person. And also its enemy variety is maybe not the greatest of the games on this list. Now next on the list at number 6 we have Double Dragon Neon. Now rather than a sequel, Double Dragon Neon is more of a reimagining of the original Double Dragons. 
and in doing so it even pokes fun at some of the series tropes. However, once again, they've inserted a lot of modern gameplay mechanics with over-the-top supers and even upgrade possibilities. They have, however, I think, gone through a lot of effort to reproduce in a more modern fashion the same gameplay feel in the movement and even some of the combos the characters pop out. And once again, because of that last point is why this title will be hit or miss for certain people. Purists will say poking fun at the series went too far, and modern gamers will say they didn't go far enough. However, I personally think they found quite a nice middle ground. Now next, at number 5, we got Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game. Now, in this entry, not only does it mimic a retro beat-em-up genre, but it also does a quite beautiful mimic of the retro art style. The pixel art style is quite fantastic and directly in line with the graphic novel. Now add to that some really solid gameplay and a totally amazing soundtrack and you've got quite a game that has now a cult following. On top of it, the licensing debacle that made this game almost unplayable for a lot of people for quite a few years has only helped to increase this game's fame. And in reality, very little negative can actually be said about this game, other than having a slightly buggy online multiplayer mode. Once again, a truly amazing beat-em-up game that I have even splurged once again and picked up the classic edition from Limited Run Games. The game is that good. Now next, at number 4, I have River City Girls. Now this is another beat-em-up with an amazing retro pixel art style to it once again. And this game is set as a spiritual successor to River City Ransom, a game that we saw earlier in the Double Dragon Kunio Kun bundle. However, this time they flip things on their head and you play as the girlfriends who are trying to save their boyfriends, the heroes from the first game. But what really sets this game apart is number one, the great anime style cutscenes. Number two, once again, one of the best video game soundtracks I've ever heard. And lastly, once you get to about midpoint in the game, the almost open world-like design of this one. So rather than having linear stage after stage, you get to adventure through the city at your own pace. Add to that even tons of upgrades and side quests, and you've got a great spiritual successor to one of the classic retro games. And one last bit of good news, by the end of next year, we should have a sequel with River City Girls 2. Now, at number 3, we have probably one of the most original entries on the list, the Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors. Now, if I say this is an original entry, it's because to some people, they even asked the question whether it really is a true beat-em-up. Now, in my mind, it clearly is a beat-em-up. There are enough commonalities with the overall genre to be a beat-em-up, although a quite original one. Basically here, you don't have a fake 3D plane where you can move up and down, you can solely scroll left to right. Now, although some people might not like this design, I actually love it, because it really focuses on the action, having tons of enemies crashing at you from left to right, and all you have to do is focus on how to best dispatch them. On top of it, the characters in this entry are so different one from another, it's almost like playing a whole new game each time you swap characters. Now, on top of this being one of my top picks for today in my top three, I do that think that this is an undervalued title on the Nintendo Switch and more people should definitely dive into it. However, fair warning, be ready for quite a challenge because this was designed to be a pure arcade coin muncher. Now, next at number two, we have another what I think is underrated title with Fight and Rage. Now, once again, another title taking a beautiful retro pixel art style. However, this time they take cartoon-like over-the-top designs for their characters. And as I said earlier, to accompany this, your characters are just as much over-the-top, easily able to pop out 50-plus hit combos. The soundtrack might not be as iconic as some other entries on this list, but it is heart-pounding and keeps you in the action nonetheless. Now, if you're a beat-em-up fan and you have not tried Fight and Rage yet, do yourself a favor, pick this one up, no matter what the price is on the current eShop. 
However, if you're lucky, just as it is now, you could get it at 50% off for as low as $10 for one of the best beat em up experiences. Now, in our top spot at number one, we have Streets of Rage 4. Now, I think that very few people were doubting what game would end up in spot number one on this list. And the Mr. X DLC that just launched has sealed its position even more as the top beat em up game currently available on the Nintendo Switch. Basically, if you need to revive a 20 plus year old series, there's no better way to do it than how they did Streets of Rage 4. Bring back all the amazing characters introduced in the original games, although matured as your main cast. Throw in at least one newcomer and design the game around some amazing mechanics that both feel fresh and at the same time honor its origins. Add to that tons of unlockables that will just make you keep coming back for more and more of the same awesome gameplay. Sprinkle on another amazing soundtrack and top it all off with amazing high quality DLC and you've got a recipe for the perfect revival of a retro classic series. In reality, the hardest part about playing and evaluating Streets of Rage 4 is trying to find something I don't like about this game. So that is pretty much it for my list of top 10 beat-em-ups on the Nintendo Switch. Now the good news for fans of the genre though is that we still have tons of amazing titles that should be making their way to the Nintendo Switch. Like just later this month, there's a brand new title coming out that just might sneak its way into this top 10 in the future. And I have to mention that on top of it, we have the brand new Ninja Turtles brawler that should be coming out soon. And the publisher overseeing the project is the same publisher as Streets of Rage 4. Now that should put a smile on your face. Now that we're done, don't forget on the way out to hit that like button if you like the content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.